0910 was really bad. Remember it? I mean, we're filming this and it's still kind of the end of winter. Kate May got buried. We broke every record. New York broke February's record. All I remember was snow, snow, and driving through blizzards. So what do you do? I mean, we got out of town. But I got to go someplace where the food's good, the water's warm. We did Hawaii. We just thought we'd check out the Caribbean. So I know, I know. Shoot me. We're in St. Martin. It's about 85 degrees. The ocean's about 85 degrees. It's gorgeous. It's still March. I'm living. Stay tuned. We'll see about the food in the Caribbean. Markets in the Caribbean, you know, restaurants, people, that's what's next. Guava berries are one of the indigenous fruit on this island. I'm here with Dita, who's got this crazy busy store, and why not? She makes this wonderful guava berry rum. Talk to me about the story of the history of this guava berry rum, if you would. Well, the guava berry, it's um, been made on the island for hundreds of years, but the company opened not too long ago, in 85, I think it was. And it's, it's because it's a big hit now. It's, you know, it's something that you can get all over the island now, you know, in different, all the different stores. We make lots of different rums. We made the guava berry liqueur, and we also have the guava berry rum, which is excellent. You can't find it nowhere else in the world, but right in this shop. And it's really, really nice. Very smooth. Really smooth and almost like chocolate cocoa kind of tones to it. I'm not exact, not at all what I was expecting. This is really, I can see where people get to like this. I mean, rum's like the, a drink that fits this part of the world. And then you get bored with just drinking rum, you start to flavor it. So, do you sell this and it's called mashup? We call it the mashup. The guava berry rum, we call it the mashup. Because it goes down so easy, but it hits you real hard because you keep drinking and you don't know what you're doing. <laughs> <laughs> You've, you were with me last night. <laughs> The almond croissant, almond chocolate is always a favorite uh, from everyone, uh, so we can try it over. And it's kind of, baking down here has got to be tough because it's warm. I mean, butter melts, it's got to be, well, it has its own challenges. I'm, I'm very, uh, very fortunate. Uh, I have uh, an excellent team uh, in our bakery premises, a French chef um, that has been uh, in the baking business for many, many years. And I mean, he's been working with me for the past uh, five years since I took over, and he has been doing uh, uh, amazing job uh, at making sure that the pastry keep on having that really French tradition. And a lot of people from the States, they come in and they say, well, we can't get that in the States anywhere. Can I take some home with me? And uh, prepare them a little box, they too. go in the plane yeah. and <laughs> they enjoy them. But even if it's a day after, they still enjoy them, yeah. So I'm doing the homework to come to this trip and talking to peeps of mine that know the food world. And they're like, you got to try Johnny Under the Tree. And I'm like, Johnny Under the Tree? Never heard of it. Johnny Under the Tree, guy's amazing, guy's amazing. You're Johnny Under the Tree. I am Johnny B. Under the Tree. Well, first of all, thanks for having us in today. Okay. So tell us the story. You're not from this island, but you're from the area. Yes, yeah, from there, from nearby St. Kitts. I've been here all my life. Um, I grew up here, I worked in all the hotels here, and I started, my business wasn't planned. It just happened. We had a storm came through in 95, and after the storm, I didn't have no job. When I went back to the job, everything was out and I didn't know what to do. And I had a little house grill, no more than six chicken could have hold on it. And I just started there. And from to that, today I'm blessed. I'm all over the world. So a little house grill that you set up on the roadside, Side. under a tree, under a tree, doing one dish, do chicken. Good chicken. And, and then I went to ribs. And, and then ribs, and then you expanded the grill. And then at some point people said, you know, we could have this great meal for $10, exactly, $11. Exactly. And you were busier than you could have imagined. Exactly. That's how we started. What kind of fish do we have? We have a snapper. A little snapper, snapper, a little red snapper. snapper yes. And this fungi is like yes. a cornmeal yes. thing? Yes, cornmeal in water and okra. Yeah. And this is like a squash kind of thing? Yeah, yeah, it's like a squash. This is a pumpkin squash and a yam and a tanya squash. And it's just a poached Pro fish yeah, exactly. in a broth? Exactly. And we call this the local Viagra. <laughs> and she's smiling. We got her to smile. She's both the <laughs> <laughs>
That's why we do the cornmeal. Yeah, it's like down south in yeah, America. Exactly. They, they make grits. Exactly. In Italy, they make polenta. Yeah, exactly. It's good, cheap yeah, food for people. Exactly. Man, that's, that'll fill you up. That's what you need. Exactly. That's the calories and the carbohydrates you need for a day for a working man, a working woman. So we're making Johnny cakes with? Yeah, yeah, yeah. This is what we're going to make the Johnny cakes with. So we have a certain amount of flour. Yeah. It's not measured. I like this kind of baking. We're also trying the water. Add a little baking powder. A little salt. I love the way you bake, man. No measuring, we're just doing this by look, right? Exactly. I like it. You bake like I bake. <laughs> I will just keep kneading it. After it's done kneaded, it, roll it out. And then I'm going to have it all made up. And then it comes out like this after it's finished. Okay, now I'm going to fry the Johnny cake here. Now, when they, when they get down in the oil here, they're going to come up. That means they're going, the flour, the baking powder, going to bring them up and that's the same as they're going to get golden brown. Mm -hmm. And they're good to go. Now, this is typical of this island. Yeah, typical, typical of St. Martin. Caribbean, St. Martin, yeah. Yeah. Everywhere, Island. Okay. Oh, yeah. Turn them over once or no? Yeah, you turn them over. They look good already. Yeah, man. I'm telling you. Yeah. So we're going, we're going basic bare bones here. I'm a guy, come up, I got like 50 cents. I got to eat the whole day. I'm a working man. I just want to fill up. And I've got Fungi, this Fungi, cornmeal you talked yeah. about. And I've got the Johnny cakes. Cake. Let me do the Johnny cake first. We, right. we just cooked these. Yeah. Smell this is beautiful. You can see this dough cooked up. That's the bomb. The bomb. That's the bomb. He's right. A, it's great by itself. <laughs> yeah, it just that's is. The bomb. I mean, fried dough. Yep. What culture doesn't like this? Exactly. And then I could see you got an oxtail stew somewhere. Exactly. And I could see dipping this thing. Exactly. In, going into the oxtail or that fish dish yeah, you have, exactly. dipping it into that broth. This is killer. Oh. This is seriously. I'm making these at home. Oh, right. Now, fungi. Never, Never had, had before. it before. But think grits. Think polenta. Yeah, exactly. If you're Dominican, think mafungo and you uh, substitute uh, yuca for uh, cornmeal. All right. Oh, man. When I um, was a kid, my grandmother used to make corn polenta, cornmeal, yeah, grits. Uh -huh. She always made extra. And then she would get the leftovers, refrigerate it. And then cut it, cut it, and then fry it. Perfect. That's little, exactly maple syrup, little honey, this for oh, breakfast with eggs that, and bacon. Oh, man, are you telling me? We're opening up a chain arrest. We're bringing him to New York City. We're gonna under a tree in Central Park. We're gonna come, we're getting Bloomberg. Yeah, Bloomberg, you got to be in on this one on the bottom. This is the airport for St. Martin. Where else do you have stuff like this? And one of the big sports here is people try and stand behind these planes when they're taking off as the turbines are spinning and they just kind of get blown backwards. Years ago, people used to hold onto the fence. They don't let that happen anymore because they'd get blown off. But I mean, literally, the airplanes are, the runway ends, and I'm guessing it's 50 yards between the end of the runway and the ocean. And it's full of people, people on horseback. St. Martin, welcome to the tropics. This is life, clear blue ocean and craziness. You know, when you think of the food here, I can't, everywhere we go, and this is like the island thing, like these are local places. I'm not eating at Bennigan's. We're eating at like local haunts. Everywhere I go, it's like ribs and grilled chicken, ribs and barbecue chicken. Ribs and barbecue chicken are huge down here. I'm not exactly how I can explain this. I'm not sure. I don't. I don't have the explanation. But here we are at this Budsby's, Bubby's, wherever it is. Really good ribs, really good barbecue chicken, fries, some potato salad. I did not order this. It's a guava colada. I do not. It, this is a girly drink. I do not drink this, so I'm waiting for like a cold beer to arrive. But in the meantime, it has a maraschino cherry and it's pink and somebody's gonna drink it, not me. But, but, let's eat a rib. So let's see what these bad boys are like. My, well, I'm liking them. We're sitting at the beach and it's St. Martin and it's about 80 degrees, maybe 85. Ocean, about 80 degrees, maybe 85. White sandy beaches. I just left New York where I'm still waiting for the snow drifts to melt in my hometown of Cape May. Option A, option B. Great ribs at option B. I'm glad I'm in St. Martin. We get down here. We had a, a like a, at the restaurant last night. We had a lobster tasting menu. It's really great, like firm, 
not quite as sweet as Maine lobster, but really firm meat. You eat the tail on the big ones, you can eat part of the meat that comes out of those big antenna on the front. Typical local lobsters, you see them in all the markets. Talk to me a little bit about what we have here spice-wise. This is oil spice. Yeah, yeah. What are those little guys back there? This is ruku seeds. You use this to color the gravy. And you, a nice color. I see being sold around here a lot of mortars and pestles. Do you grind the spices? Yeah, we grind them in a mortar pestle. Okay. Nutmegs, whole nutmegs. Oh, that's whole nutmeg. You crack them open and then you grate them. Crack and then that's what they look like before they're yeah. taken care of that way. This one, we call this one, it looks like cinnamon sticks. But it's not, it's too big. But it's not, we call it boabade. What's, what's this? Sea moss, sea moss, we make a drink out of that. So it's from, it's like a seaweed kind it's of? It's like a seaweed, but that one is to make a drink. You add milk, cinnamon, nutmeg. Yes. This is from the cassava also, furry. This one is, we call it magic spice. It's so good, we call it magic spice. Mm -hmm. It's a combination of 15 different spices. So that is like magic spice, island spice. When you have an island spice, that's it. And you use it for everything. marinades, for soups, to steak, put on steak. ribs, barbecue, burgers, everything. I'm not a sailor, I live in Cape May, I know lots of boating guys, and I just have great respect and, and admiration for what they do, and sailing's about as cool as it gets. St. Martin Regatta is really, really cool. This is the 30th year with boats from all over the place, Brazil, all over Europe. They're all here, they're all having fun for the weekend. Big partiers, drinking beer at night, and sailing all day long. Check it out. Well, we didn't really plan this. <laughs> like most things in life. We were just having a, a lot of fun sailing, you know. It's great conditions here, we're very spoiled. They, it's magnificent. People noticed that, they came along, they joined us, they got enthusiastic. Uh, we, we picked up on their enthusiasm. We discovered we can do something with it, we can do something with it for our island and, uh, and, and brand and give a message about our island and that's worked very well. Hey, hey welcome back. All right, I have to confess, the St. Martin thing, look, were you here for the winter of 2010? It was epic. And down where I live in Cape May, it was nasty, nasty. Lost power in the house for like four days, no electricity. I felt like Jack Nicholson in The Shining. You know, cooking by candlelight, eating dinner at seven o'clock, in pitch dark, going to sleep at eight o'clock. I mean, we had no power. I drove through every blizzard down that parkway all winter long. So it got to be like March and I just, I wanted to bail. And that's, that's why those islands are there. So we got in a plane, hopped down, Heineken Regatta in St. Martin, I mean, who can say no to that? And I'd never been to the place. Really warm water, crystal clear, swimming every day before we shot. Beautiful, beautiful, had a blast. So that's, that's the story. So what, did I, what was my takeaway with St. Martin was, what did you see down there? I mean, I was amazed. We saw, you know, Johnny under the tree doing the Johnny cakes. We saw lots of barbecue. So I thought, what am I going to when I came back? We saw chicken, we saw tropical stuff. So I'm just going to make a dish I never made before, but I was just shopping. I'm going to play around. Remember the spice lady in the market, the crazy lady in, in the Marigot market? She was so cool. This is her magic spice mix. No idea what it is. Smiles really cool. So I get this spice mix and I put it in a spice grinder, like a coffee grinder. Grind it all up, comes out looking like this. So I'm gonna do a chicken, half a chicken, and uh, cook it, break it up, quarter it, cook it on the bone, saute it, coat it with this spice mix and some salt, saute it, and then I'm gonna serve that chicken over like a fruit compote, because what do you think? When you think of the tropics and the islands, I mean, it's lush with fruit. Uh, maybe not these fruit per se, but I've got a mango. I've got some beautiful ripe pineapple. So I think I'm gonna make a little puree of the mango. I'm gonna dice up the pineapple a little bit smaller. I'm gonna use a little bit of lime juice because I want some acid to counterbalance the sweetness. A little bit of chopped shallot, a little bit of hot jalapeno pepper, and a little bit of the, just the inside, the flesh part of this, and then we're gonna kind of bind that all in a little bit of a vinaigrette made with a little bit of this uh, kind of mashed mango, olive oil, vinegar, a lot of chopped fresh cilantro, fresh coriander leaf here. So, and that's gonna be just raw fruit compote. So the chicken will come out on the pan, fruit compote. We'll wing it, like the tropics, like St. Martin, man. So let's go. Butchering chicken 101, you've seen me do this a million times, so easy, you should buy whole chickens at home. Cheaper, fresher, easier. Easy to take apart. I mean, literally, the chicken should come with little instructions. So, 
got me chicken here. So first a little bit of salt. And then as I said, here's my crazy spice mix that I bought in the Marigo market. And here it is powdered. So it's really fresh. All right. As I said a million times, you want to, if you want to know if a pan's hot, you can buy a fancy thermometer and do a shot of it. Or wait till the oil smokes. Oil smokes, that guarantees you that that pan's about 420, 430 degrees. Skin side down. Let's go with a breast. A drumstick. A thigh. And a full wing. Fits perfectly in the pan. These smell great. Mm. So I've got my mango. I'm going to score it. I learned this from a guy named Benny. He used to be the chief steward at Tavern on the Green back in the day. Showed me how to eat mangoes. He'd know. He was from where they grow. And we're just going to take this fruit without the skin out. Just like that. Now we're going to get some pineapple and cut it more or less to the same shape. It's nice you can see all the sugar in it. I want it a little spicy, because I noticed down there they weren't afraid of spicy things. Sometimes the hotter the, the temperature of the place, the hotter the cuisine. Try and remove most of the skin here of this jalapeno for some kick. Now I've got this pepper. Just kind of reminds you of going to work back in the old French kitchen. So I'm going to take out the stem part, make a little incision, and just like I did with the jalapeno, I'm going to run my knife along the flesh part. No skin. So this is just a red pepper flesh. Super soigné. You do not have to do this. You do not have to do what I was just doing to either of those peppers. Just simply dice the jalapeno small and dice this pepper small as well. I'm still not done. As I was wandering around the market today, I thought I wanted a little either red onion. I was going to get red onions, actually. And then I thought, no, let's go with shallots. Because it's a little, shallots are a little more delicate, I think, than red onions. I want some lime juice in here, too. So we're going to squeeze a little bit. Limes are always so hard to squeeze, aren't they? We're going to squeeze a little. There we go. Probably have to do both sides of the lime, actually. I'll see. I can always add lime juice to the end. I'll taste this. I'm guessing we could turn these. Oh yeah. Skin's crispy. Nice little crust action going on there. All right, fresh cilantro. I'm just going to try and take a little bit off the stems. It goes so well with so much stuff. It goes well with fruit, goes well with heat, goes well with curries. So many cuisines use this. It smells great. Nothing like the smell of fresh chopped cilantro. As I said, I've got some lime juice in here. I'm going to add also a pinch of salt, a little splash of wine vinegar. Not much. So I've got the lime juice. And, and the fruit, you know, if you think of the fruit I have in here, the pineapple has that sort of perfect balance of acid and sweet. And I love, I can't resist, you know, extra virgin olive oil. I'm not sure if they're, olive oils are indigenous to St. Martin, but there are both. And Cooking does travel. I'll tell you what, that smells fabulous. It's just real fruity, real light. I can smell the peppers. I can smell all the fruit in it. Now I can smell the cilantro. This will be in the center of our plate. All right, you know, one of the things you're trying to figure out is food done in the pan. How do we know? One of the good ways to tell if the drumstick's done is the bulk of the meat is here. It's attached by tendons to this, the way mus animals are with muscles. When that tendon pulls back, that's a good sign that this drumstick is cooked. Otherwise, you really are kind of guessing, and you don't want to eat you know, bloody chicken. So I'm always looking when I'm sauteing, especially sauteing drumsticks in such a funny shape. I'm waiting for that tendon to pull back and tear. Now I know it's done. So let's plate this. Oil's actually going to taste really good because it's got that really nice spice mix on it. Got my little wing. As I said, you've got my drumstick, and you can see how that's pulled back. Just a little pinch of my spice mix that I have on the chicken and finish this salsa with it. And we're just going to put this here. Nice, I missed the bowl with the spoon. It's a good sign, isn't it? So let's see what this chicken breast looks like. Cut right in the middle of the breast is the beautiful part of the bird. 
Hello, chef. Yeah, it's beautiful. It's juicy, steaming, delicious. We'll dab it down into this little mix that has the oil, a little of my salsa. I'm gonna make this dish this summer. Chicken's kind of spicy. I have no idea what's in her spice mix. A lot of these spices, well, some of them, maybe a third of them I never even heard of. There's roots from, from bark from trees and roots and berries I'd never seen before. Some were familiar. She makes her own thing. It's a little hot, lots of those sort of tropical flavors going. Really pairs beautifully with the salsa. Um, great way to sort of dress up chicken. I have to say, St. Martin was so cool. The, um, especially this winter. I mean, I mean, like I'm not an island guy, like I never do those getaways, but after the winter of 2010, getting somewhere where you left these blizzards, left the, the Arctic tundra that was my backyard for three months, and to be swimming in a place above tropical fish, and um, all those beautiful reefs and coral and stuff was sick. Food was great. What's it, two and a half, two hours, something like that, two and a half, three hours from JFK. Great place, St. Martin, beautiful. Anyway, cool scene, be well, cook at home, eat like this. See you next week.